Where Call the, the people them name is, is, yeah. is, is important to me. Oh, yeah. Especially that, you. That especially you. I tell you, Cabo. Especially you. Ah, uh, Muta, right? man, you make me feel away. Me say, look, I mean, I mean away good. Because uh, thank you for that. You know, Muta, I wanna, I was so frightened when I buck up my name in the book. Because I, I just did not know. I you know, I, I know, and I, I was totally shocked. Maybe I said to her, so look there, look there. <laughs> my name in the yeah, book. Man, yeah, man. Yeah, <laughs> man. Because I know where you did go. When you upstairs yeah. and me downstairs, yeah, and yeah. any time, me, me do a little thing, and you, 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 yeah. you say, go tell him that, go tell him this, go tell him that. Even yeah. me used to make fun at Jai. You know, me used to make fun at <laughs> <laughs>
to land, access to water, access to the beach. They have taken all of that. I spoke recently about the extent to which Jamaican people do not have access to drinking water. And you're telling me about International Human Rights Day. So you're not gaslighting us into that. Let me take a break. Being observed on the island. And I'm talking about this because Jamaica is making a big deal of this. Jamaica is celebrating and observing 75 years of International Human Rights Day or the Declaration of Human Rights, depending on how they want to phrase it. And we're saying, I am saying in this space, that just taking a, a, just a cursory glance around the world, human rights means something else to us as African people, black and brown people. It depends on where you are. I know I'm talking about the global south a lot in recent times, but I have no choice because more and more and more we're seeing this demarcation more now than ever, or we are returning to this demarcation. So that for those of us who watch the vote, the, 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 the UN Secretary General, the United Nations, give them credit at this point, and the Secretary General, Obviously, bolstered by the massive demonstrations around the world, by the loud cries inside of the United Nations to do something about the ethnic cleansing that's happening, the cleansing of Palestine that is being carried out by the barbarians on the other side, on the other team, (laughs) that the genocide that is underway carried out by Israel against Palestinians, that there was this loud cry. The UN Secretary General was was forced, he was pushed, or however he did it, he invoked and activated Article 99, which means that he forced the UN Security Council to come to the table and to meet and to talk about and to draft a resolution and vote on a resolution for a ceasefire a humanitarian ceasefire, a human rights ceasefire. And we had, what, 13 or so countries voting yes on it. Jamaica voted yes for the ceasefire. Good for them. Got permission, of course, to do that. And Britain abstained. (laughs) Abstained. Richard Sunak and them abstained. And the United States vetoed, vetoed this. Biden and his team, Blinken and them, veto that human... In other words, them stop it and say, no ceasefire. That's basically what they said. No ceasefire, no human rights ceasefire, no International Day human rights ceasefire, no ceasefire on December 10, International Human Rights Day. Bomb them into smithereens. Bomb them if you can. Kill the children. Kill the women. Bomb them. That's basically what the veto meant. We're going to call a spade a spade around here and we're not from St. Elizabeth. In this space, we deal with the isness of things. It is what it is. Appearances to the mind. In this case, with the, with the United States, things neither things aren't, but they appear to be. So the United States appears in the rhetoric to be calling for a ceasefire. But when the world votes for the ceasefire, the United States says no ceasefire. You have to understand that psychopathic, narcissistic personality. Because you do have narcissistic states and you do have psychopathic states. So you have to understand that whole process. Because you're telling us that you you want the ceasefire, and you're saying this in the in 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 on the on the world stages, the world stage, but at the same time, when it comes down to the bottom line, 
you say no ceasefire. And I, I watched that entire thing, you know, I watch, I listen to all the speeches and I watch the entire thing and I said to myself, I want to talk to Mrs. Biden, Dr. Jill Biden. I want to ask her, what is her level of concern, if any, for the almost 5,000 babies who have been killed, massacred in Palestine by Israel? I want to talk to her. And then I saw Michelle Obama in Malawi with Bill Gates' former wife, ex-wife, and with, um, with three of them. There was somebody else there. I can't remember who was the third one. You know, and I'm saying, Michelle, you do have a voice. And I'm watching everybody wearing purple. Oprah and them in purple for the opening of Color Purple. And I'm saying just so much is happening. And I see the Times, the, 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 the Times person of the year this year is Taylor Swift. And nothing is wrong with that by itself. But in wartime, usually in wartime, what Times does is that it names somebody or a group of people or two or three. So the doctors who have died, the frontline workers, the journalists who are risking life to bring the story. No. And so the world has turned a divergent gaze in terms of not not the people, not not the ordinary people, but those who control those whose human rights are above everybody else's. Whose anniversary we're celebrating today, the, inter- the 75th anniversary of the declaration of the establishment also of the State of Israel, proclaimed May 14, 1948 by Ben-Gurion, head of the Jewish Agency, Recognized by the U.S. President Harry Truman on that very same day. So this 75 years is freedom rights. Don't have anything to do with us, so we must stop it. So we see the United States vetoing that, that, that U.N. resolution. That resolution was basically demanding a ceasefire in Gaza. So the human rights that the United States is protecting is the human rights of Israel. Their their rights are more important than the rights of those they are killing. The thousands and thousands and thousands of Palestinian civilians, babies and all. So it is blatant hypocrisy for the United States to observe today International Human Rights Day. And Donald Trump was right to be kind of t- stepping away from the United Nations. You know, he did quite a few things that, 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 that when you look back at it, you said, but he was right after all. Walk away from, pull America from the, from the UN, pull them out of the WHO and the whole of that. And, the, and, and <laughs> I know I know that you're going to come at me with all kinds of stuff. But as, as usual, I'm just seeing the easiness of things. And, and it is what it is. Because you're celebrating International Human Rights Day today. And there are all kinds of events and activities. 75 years. So here we are. Here we are. Today... We have a right to remind ourselves as Africans that Africans are humans, that Haitians are humans, Palestinians are humans, the people of Yemen are humans, the people of the DRC are humans, black Jamaicans are humans. A 
And it is our rights that you're trampling on. And at the same time, trying to gaslight us into believing that you're protecting our rights. This is like, this is like an abusive husband who viciously and violently beats his wife and then turns around and says he's doing it because he loves her. This is basically what this is. This is what Jamaica has been doing to the majority of the black, dark, African, black-skinned people on this island. Taking away almost all of our rights, basic human rights, access to drinking water, clean drinking water, access to land. Without land, there is no freedom. Without land, there is no independence. Access to the rivers, you have taken that away almost 100% now. We have lost access to most of our rivers across the island because this government is selling out the rivers. So we're losing access to the water, access to the sea, access to the shoreline. As I speak, every Sunday I come in this place, we, 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 we lose more access. And then you turn around spending millions of dollars in taxpayers' money, standing up in front of a camera and talking about today is International Human Rights Day and Jamaica signed on to the convention and, 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 and you, it's, it's, the theme is freedom, equality and justice. What a piece of gaslighting. The audacity of it is phenomenal. Phenomenal. What about rights to justice? Equity and equality. Under the law and in the eyes of the law. Minister of Constitutional Affairs. And then that's all another level. The basic human rights of Jamaicans. Jamaicans are being denied just the basic human rights. Now, there are many ways to look at this in our, because there's middle class Jamaican, upper middle class Jamaican, some other class Jamaican who probably can't even identify with what I'm saying. Well, get out of your SUVs. Get out of your SUVs and from your gated communities and go see what's happening on this island. Go into the communities where people do not have a drinking water and are being denied access to the rivers and where there are rivers that they could access those rivers are all dried up or drying up for numerous reasons including prosperity which is seeing a boom <laughs> in construction dumping up water sources retraining and redirecting water sources onto private land. Polluting water sources. Then you turn around and call it climate change. So this is our situation. This is our reality. We cannot and should not acknowledge this day except to say that it's a farce. It's gaslighting a nation. And until there's equal rights and justice in the words of Peter Tosh and others, so many others. So here we are. This is our this is our reality. This is our reality on the island. On this 75th anniversary. So it's in, so they're calling it International Human Rights Day. But it is really International White Privilege Day. It is really International White People Rights Day. It is really International Those Who Have Powered Rights Day. It is really International Politicians Who Have Power Rights Day. Who can take away all your rights from you and give it to, to others. 
It's FIDEM Day. That is what they mean by international human rights. They, they see themselves as more human than you and me. By the way, we're one week away or so, yeah? One week away from Christmas. And um, Mr. Matthew Samuda, the Minister with Responsibility for Water, and also who's going to be running in this part of town, uh, in Shaheen Robinson's seat, he had announced that the Prime Minister tell him that Little Dunzero must be open before Christmas. So I suppose the opening ceremony will be one day this week. So our rights are entrenched, or lack thereof, are entrenched in colonial documents and colonial laws, colonial um, acts of parliament that are still on the book right here in Jamaica. Or That's where our rights lie. So if you check it, then public can still charge us with jaywalking because we don't have no right for cross the street. That is probably still on the book, you know. So if you check those colonial era acts that are still on the books here on the island, you'll understand what your right is and what your rights are. So here we are. Here we are. We have a right to a monarch as head of state. His name is Charles now. We have a right to pray first for Charles and his picking them before we pray for ourselves and our children. We have a right to ask for them God, for save them. God save the king now and his heirs and successors long before we ask God. God must have a sense of humor, you know. Because every time Jamaican people go to God, especially when they go to God in court and when they go to God in parliament, God must be smiling. Mother, Father, God must be smiling. Saying, here they come again, my children. Praying first for their enslavers and asking me to bless their enslavers and to save their enslavers before they pray for their children. What a joke. What a joke. So much happening around us. I'm not going to be spending all my morning on this day, but we really need that you talk about it. But we're also watching what's happening in Guyana because there's some things happening there. Venezuela. <laughs> I, I chuckle, but Maduro is um, causing consternation across the world. You know that. So, so he's not stopping. The, we, we have been talking about this, right? So the referendum happened. 95% or so voted for the referendum. The reporting on the West, on this side of the world, in, in the West, says that the, the turnout was low and just a handful of people and so on. The reporting from South America and especially from Venezuela and um, from China and from Russia and from other countries um, south of Yasso, um saying that it was a stellar turnout and people flocked to the places and so on. The pictures and the videos coming out from this side of the world show a handful of people. The pictures from that side of the world um, showing long, 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 long lines and people taking to the streets and so on. So uh, you will think about this and talk about this from the perspective that you have tapped into. Media literacy is very important in this time when people are manufacturing consent. They manufacture consent through the media for the most part. So we're watching that. Um, quite a bit happening there, you know. Quite a bit happening there. Uh, Venezuela is making some serious move. We see Brazil now um, amassing uh, or, or putting its, deploying its own troops uh, to the border because Brazil obviously protecting 
its border between um, Venezuela and Guyana, and there, there, there is a border there. And we are seeing a statement coming out from CARICOM. Um, CARICOM finally met um, with permission, apparently, from the United States because we saw how that played out, right? They, some people go to Washington, they met with some people up there, and right after that, there was an announcement that the CARICOM was going to meet. And then CARICOM met, and they issued a statement, heads of government uh, meeting uh, on Friday, December 8th, discussing the situation with regard to venezuela guyana border controversy and agreed to issue the following statement. Let me quickly read the statement. CARICOM firmly supports Guyana in pursuance of the resolution of its border controversy with Venezuela through the process of the International Court of Justice. Further, CARICOM urges Venezuela to respect the conservatory measures determined by the ICJ in its recent ruling until a final resolution. CARICOM reiterates its commitment to the Caribbean as a zone of peace and the maintenance of international law. Accordingly, CARICOM calls for a de-escalation of the conflict and for appropriate dialogue between the leaders of Venezuela and Guyana to ensure peaceful coexistence, the application and respect for international law, and the avoidance of the use of threats or force. So that is the statement put out by CARICOM. All right. The United States also announced that Southcom, so Southcom is firmly situated now in Guyana. Well, there you go. Applaud, applaud, applaud. How did they manage that? Good for you, Southcom. The militarization of Guyana is underway fully, right under our noses, right in front of our eyes. How in heaven's name did this happen? America went back to Venezuela, uh, loosened the sanctions of, on Venezuela. Venezuela now um, uh, uh, sending barrels and barrels and barrels of oil to to, to the United States now. The trade between them is ongoing. And right after that, Venezuela claims Esequibo. And there you have it. A war, ExxonMobil and Chevron and Shell and all of them. And look at here now. Just you look. Southcom, the United States Southern Command. Congratulations, America. Anyway, let me take a quick break. I'll be right back. You're inside of the Africa Forum. This is Running African, and we're going live to Tanzania. Are we going live to Tanzania now? All right, so uh, Jerry is online, and my brother Jerry Small is in Tanzania and now online. Good morning, Jerry. How are you doing? No, you're doing fine, thank you. There's no... Three in the afternoon in Zanzibar. Ah, Zanzibar. Look at you. Listen, and this is a place that I've always wanted to go to, Zanzibar. But, but you, you, this, you you went there once, so this is your second time in Zanzibar? Or oh, that's no, what you're first, saying? First. Oh, you're first. Okay. And your impressions of Zanzibar? Because this is a tourist area, isn't it? Well, it's, it is just as well coming as uh, the mainland. And of course, this was the... This was a, a long, um, an ancient um, seaport and trading trading post for thousands of years. Mm-hmm. And after 1971, it became federated with the mainland territory, which was formerly Tanganyika. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Invaded and um, ripped by the Germans and then handed over to the British in 1918. Mm-hmm. The British got Tanganyika from Turkey. No, they got Tanganyika from Germany and they got Palestine from the allies of the Germans, the Turks. So they got both Palestine and Tanganyika at the same time. So they were successively raped by the Europeans, Germans and Turkish, mm-hmm. then by the British mm-hmm. from 1918. Tanganyika only stayed under British rule for 43 years and became independent in 1961. Zanzibar, a few years later, a couple years later, was federated with the mainland, a small island about about the size of Barbados, but very important in world affairs. 
commerce, economics, culture, religion. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And y- you've been in Tanzania now for three weeks now? Yes, uh, yes, three weeks. So, so I'd, I'd take it then you'd have had some time to kind of, you know, get a grip, figure out what's happening on the island. Uh, uh, sorry, on, on, in that land. <laughs> Everywhere's an island to yes. me because you're in Zanzibar. But, um, to figure out what, how, you know, the politics, uh, the economics and so on, because we had, um, Tanzania just recently was going in a, in a real Pan African Route, you know, being seriously Pan African, and then we had one of the leading, one of the leading nations in Africa, leading Pan Africanism, leading the liberation base, the base of most of the liberation fighters for the last seventy years. Mm-hmm. And 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 your and your own pers- perspective or perception of what it is now. Well, one of the most significant things that uh, it is now a female, a lady, is the president of Tanga, Tanzania now. Mm-hmm. And she is from Zanzibar. She is from the small island of Zanzibar, yet she is now the president of the, uh, Tanzania, having succeeded the president, the previous president, the first president to die while in office. Yeah. The constitution states that the vice president shall serve out the rest of the incumbency, which was about six, uh, which was um, just about six months into the second uh, incumbency of that president. So she has served that and, and president shall serve two successive terms, which comes to 10 years. So is, there's a female a lady now in is the president of Tanzania and it is, uh, um, it is improving the situation of the ladies there, the females. And a lot of them are in office now. Even our chief of security is a, is a lady. Mm. And many other, um, and she was a former minister of tourism. Mm. And, um, there is a move afoot to twin Tanzania with Negril because Tanzania is a great, um, tourist center. Mm-hmm. But Jamaica does three times, three and a half times the population. No, Jamaica has three, 2.9 million, uh, citizens and they bring in five, Jamaica brings in five million tourists a year. Mm-hmm. The population of Tanzania is 70 million. They bring in 1.5 and, and they are pleased with that. But, um, Jamaica is in, um, the, the consul of, uh, Jamaica in Tanzania, Mrs. Betty Delfos, who I'm here with right now at the ferry. I'm, I'm boarding the ferry now to go back to the mainland. Mm-hmm. She's here with me. She's, um, helping to bring about a twinning of Negril and Zanzibar so that Tanga, Tanzania and Zanzibar might enjoy the same ratio or better of tourist to citizen that tan- that um, Jamaica and Northern Drive. Mm-hmm. Our, our, um, our, so experience, first, our yeah. experience on um, here on the island in Jamaica um, with the kind of tourism that Jamaica practices and even what has happened to Negril, it's, it's, it's an egregious, insidious, um, tourism. And, uh, and, and I, uh, right. So, so, so I would want to know from Betty if she's willing to, to talk about this. How would Tanzania do things differently from what's happening now in Jamaica, considering that, um, Jamaican people have been denied, um, so much access that we have lost, uh, almost all access to the beaches in Negril that, that it, what well, the kind of tourism they are practicing is really anti the people of Jamaica. Yeah. Yes, now let's hope that Tanzania and Zanzibar will rub off on Jamaica the type of citizenship that is enjoyed here. Mm-hmm. All beaches are public and common property, and the people walk the beaches as their own, as it should be everywhere in the world. Mm-hmm. Matter of fact, the beach, the stretches of beaches are actually, uh, they are actually roots and, and water, and, and they are roots. So they are, you know, the banks of rivers and the, the shores of countries are natural routes. Mm-hmm. And when people walk in from one part of the city in Dar es Salaam, especially on the peninsula to another, they walk along the beach. Mm-hmm. Uh, if they don't want to drive in a car, everybody just, thousands of people continue to walk in along the beach, just as it used to be. In the, it is like that in the grill um, to a certain extent. And uh, let's hope that uh, Zanzibar and Tanzania will rub that back up on Jamaica. Mm-hmm. Uh, unlike Barbados, which has, which has for years enforced, um, no restriction of beaches to tourists or, uh, hotel mm-hmm. properties. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah. But Jerry, I'd like to correct you on that, Jerry, because it's no longer like that in the grill. And, and yes, Negri- well, yes, right. the government has sold out the people yeah. recently. Right. So you have to book into a hotel to be able to access the beach in Negril. And, and the, the, yeah. the, the, the one you can access, you, you, it's just a now, now a strip of land now. So it's, it's more or less all gone in Negril, including yeah, the rivers. May, you may, know? may I say one thing? Mm-hmm. May I say one thing before your next question? Yeah. Um, fortunately, um, Miss De- Be- 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 Del Paz is right here in the, the VIP lounge of the ferry with me here, and what she cannot um, speak, but I have taped a 27 minute interview with her, which I hope to be able to play on your program next week. I'm touching these very topics. Now, uh, the, the next thing is just before your next question is that today is the 10th of December, and in 1948, on the 10th of December, the United Nations, just three years established before in 1945, the, uh, made the Declaration of Human Rights on the 10th of December 1948. Jamaica, 14 years later, was admitted to the United Nations and the first contribution that Jamaica made in the United Nations was to propose that human rights must be celebrated, should be celebrated as a year. The year, the, the idea was accepted from the new nation, Jamaica, and the year that was set aside to celebrate human rights was the year 1968. Little did Shira know, Shira was the delegate of Jamaica to the United Nations at the time. Little did he know that he would be the Prime Minister in 1968 and Jamaica would explode in protest over the abuse of the human rights by the Jamaican government. Well, that's what we've been talking about all morning because this, for us today, the 75th anniversary of the Declaration of Human Rights, um, we, we're talking about um, how he, who's a human being, who is defined as a human being, and who, who is a def, who defining um, human beings, and our Palestinians human beings, and our Jamaicans who are been, being denied access to the beach and access to land and access to drinking water. What kind of human being? And it is a, a, a Orwellian state where some people are created, some people, all people are created equal, but some are more equal than some. So that we, we, we are rejecting the idea that this is, um, that we should be observing or celebrating this international, um, so-called human rights day. It's International White Privilege Day, International White People Rights Day, International Those Who Have the Power, um, yes, day. Zionist. Yeah, so Zionist Day. And so this is where we find ourselves on this 75th anniversary of the Declaration of Human Rights. And it is such a shame. Um, and, 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 and we have an ad, for example, running here on television where the Minister of Constitutional Affairs has spent thousands of dollars, obviously, and probably running into million with this ad talking about today, where at the same time, Jamaicans are being denied um, our rights along the way. So, 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 so we are, so I feel very strongly about this, Jerry. Is that an announcement? Is that an announcement for the ferry? We are going to be boarding the ferry. May I join you after we are settled on the ferry? Uh, okay. Hopefully, um, let, let me, and, and how much time? Because, because we have more interviews lined up for 7.30 and so on. But, um, go ahead, Jerry. You're saying significantly? What significantly? It was the interaction of Walter Rodney with us, the youth of Jamaica, that led to the, it led to protests against the abuses of Jamaica and since 1962, especially starting with the Carl Gardens, uh, Labour Party by the Jamaica yes. Labour Party government of 1963, and, and, and the linking of Walter Rodney with the youth of Jamaica and, and, the, and, the, and the people outside of the university campus led to the explosion which was a climactic uh, event in the protests against the human rights abuses since 1963 and before in the colonialism of, of England and Jamaica. And it was um, from Tanzania that Walter Rodney was coming, that he was strengthened. It was by staying in Tanzania that, that he was strengthened after gaining um, a PhD at the age of, I think, 24 or 25 years. And it because of the nature of the liberation struggle of Tanzania, led by... Julius Nairi that um, gave him this uh, haven where he could uh, develop himself more and write the book for Europe and the developed Africa and it was straight from Tanzania that he was coming yes. to Jamaica Yes, and this is a that Tanzania has always been the front line state that yes. harbors, protects and equips the liberation struggles yes. of the people of Africa all over the world that is so true. Um, Jerry, all right, go ahead and board, Jerry. I'm not quite sure. It, with it, we have 50... Do we have to board right away? 
No, all right, I have time. I have time. Um, oh. I'm, I'm on. I understand that to do off the board right away. You can go. All right. Board. Okay. So, so, um, well, tell us about that experience you're having there now because <laughs> we can't ignore that thing. So, so basically, you're boarding the ferry from where to where? From Zanzibar back to the mainland, Dar es Salaam. Okay. Okay. All right. And how many people that ferry can carry? <laughs> We're trying to picture it you. It can carry thousands. It, it can carry. Well, I have been on a ferry yes. from Trinidad to Tobago, which was the largest ferry. It was the largest um, catamaran in the world because mm-hmm. it had been serving in Canada, and Canada sold it to Trinidad. Mm-hmm. And that ferry carries. It takes one thousand vehicles, much less people. I think it takes five thousand people. Mm-hmm. This one is not as big, but I'm sure it can take more than a thousand people. And this right. is a common. Is a common assault here. On the fair, on the way over here in slightly less than two hours, we passed about seven huge ferries coming back from Zanzibar. Yeah. And it's like a, it's just like a highway. You just see the yeah. ferries yeah. And that's one it. after the other. Yes. Ultra modern compared with Jamaica. It reminds me of what you and see the on the River here. Nile. On the Nile. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, because, so even though you say ferry, you're talking about really big, big boats. I mean, we say ferry, so you're, you're talking. Um, yeah. yeah. Oh. This the Port Royal could probably hold in a the Port Royal ferry could probably hold in a side pocket of this. Uh, <laughs> we're not we're not both, we're not both in size. Size is not everything, but um, yes. it is the hugeness of this population. Seventy million people. The capital is seven million people. Dar es Salaam, yes. and the continent is huge. Only one continent is larger than Africa, and um, the possibilities and the future is great for us once we continue to integrate. Yeah. Have you, have you, have you, I know that Jamaicans are moving to Tanzania, um, one by one, two by two, and are relocating. We have been linking with Tanzania over time. Some people have already relocated there. Have you run into anyone from Jamaica who have relocated to Tanzania or just passing through? Well, the, the consul, the honorary consul for, 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 for Jamaica of has course. relocated here. Yes. And several other people, I, 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 madam, I, matter of fact, I made um, contact. One of my best friends' son has relocated here. He's a chef. He's a um, he's a chef from Jamaica. The, the, the son of um, sister Be- sister Angela um, Bonny Heron. Oh, really? One of the yes. one of the the, 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 the one of the leading ladies, females. Some Rastafari ladies, females don't like to be referred to as ladies. She's one of the leading. Um, um, women and mothers in the 12 tribes yes, and Ethiopian yes. mm-hmm. Her son is, she has one son in Ethiopia, mm-hmm. um, and one here, um, uh, uh, uh I think, not Zara, um, I still remember his name. It's Zara, mm-hmm. Zara. Mm-hmm. And the, the, uh, many others. There are many other Jamaicans there that I've met. Some I knew before. Some mm-hmm. I've been in contact with and just met one yesterday, a sister named Rose. Mm-hmm. So, all right, Jerry, we do have to take a break now, too. So go ahead and do that. We'll link again next week, I think. And I'm not sure we're going to be able to link back with you, uh, considering that, that process. But we do have a 15 minute. So if, if, yes. if within the next, um, 10, 15 minutes, well, we have 15 minutes more with you. So, so board and then yes. let's see what happens in that 15 minutes. Yeah. So, so, all right, so that's Jerry. Uh, Jerry all right, Jason. no, we're not boarding it. We're not boarding it. I can't continue. I have to take, but I have to. Problem is, I, I have to take a break. break. So hold, hold the line. Uh-huh. Jerry Small is in Tanzania and is now on a ferry from Zanzibar back to the mainland of Tanzania. And uh, we're uh, having this conversation with him on this journey that he's making right now. Jerry, we are kind of living through you vicariously because a journey that sounds really, really nice. Yeah, um, I'm boarding at 4 o'clock. Uh, um, so some other ferry, because they move, they move every half an hour or so, and there's a huge, huge amount of people moving back and forth. Mm-hmm. And... Um, so, so the the people, the, the, a, a person who is not a citizen of Tanzania may not own property here. So you find that is the opposite thing from in Jamaica. Yet it, it might soon change that they allow uh, people to own property who are not citizens. But but the, 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 the culture and the politics and the economics of Tanzania should be able to rub off more and more. The more people from Jamaica settle here, the more trade that they will have, uh, that, that increases and the interaction, universe, the exchange and all that kind of thing. 
Um, mm-hmm. Jamaica will, will help the Jamaican people to fight the fight, to correct the Jamaican government. That is the Jamaican people who should who have to be correct in the Jamaican government from mm-hmm. 1962 till now. Mm-hmm. And uh, we will be able, like Barbados, to show that when the beach is open to the public, people don't harass tourists. People are so used to the beach and that they don't harass tourists and they don't have to run down people and uh, beg to be begging them any money or mm-hmm. to offer no massage or no big bamboo. Mm-hmm. But let me <laughs> let me ask you something here, Jerry, because you said um, if you're not a citizen uh, or citizen of Tanzania, you're not um, eligible to own land in Tanzania. So how does it work right. for people who are repatriating, relocating, and want to buy land? How does well, it work? The, the first thing that the possession of a Jamaican passport affords the smoothest travel. Not not only in Tanzania, but especially in Tanzania with many of the African countries. And then uh, many Jamaicans have become citizens here. And, and uh, that is that is the route. If you intend to stay here, of course, you you will be uh, much further up in line to, to and, and use property than, than other people who are not uh, who are not citizens there. And um, so, what's that process? Said, what, what's the process to citizenship? How does it work? I, I don't know the exact amount of time that you have to be here, but there are there are several people who have become citizens here, and we have many people who are well known, like a, a brother who was a is a professor. He moved there from in the nineteen seventies. Professor Ken Edwards. Uh, it was he. He was one of the people who who used to take care of Daniel Art. Remember Daniel Art, one yes, of the most yes. the best, the best of our artists. Yes. Yeah, he was there for several years, and he died here. And people been coming here and living here. I remember Dudley Thompson is one of the earliest people right, who yes. came here and was living here and returned mm-hmm. to Jamaica because of his career here. That's what uh, made him so big yeah. in Jamaica before he returned. And mm-hmm. as I said, people like Professor Ken Edwards and many more. Um, mm-hmm. We have another brother um, in New York, Mikey White, a long time member of the Ethiopian World Federation who actually started the 12 Tribe of Israel expansion mm-hmm. into America in about 1973. Mm-hmm. He has a son living here mm-hmm. and uh, many members of his tra- family travel here occasionally. Mm-hmm. Uh, right now we have um, a couple of people right in front of me, a part of the six people first part that uh, has traveled to Zanzibar. Mm-hmm. They have been living in Miami and New York for the past 40, 40 to 50 years and their first visit here has convinced them that they need to um, have a foothold here. Mr. Mm-hmm. Mr. Michael Taylor and his wife Oh, uh, I do recognize that. Yes, I do recognize that name. So, um, the in in terms of land uh, and and the cost of land and so on, do you have any idea w- w- how is it? Is it? I, I don't want to, I don't want to give any figures, mm. but um, it certainly seems it certainly seems that it's far more accessible than in ja- for Tanzania than Jamaica, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and for citizens of Tanzania than it is for citizens of Jamaica. You know that. Mm-hmm. The land question is a vexed one in Jamaica. Mm-hmm. In, 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 in Tanzania, the land is considered a common heritage and uh, land, um, a, lot, a lot of the land is nationalized and therefore, as against crown land and government land in Jamaica, is reserved for the use of the, the Tanzanian people. Mm-hmm. But it is, it is obvious that, um, that it is much easier for people to acquire land because first thing, most of the people here are from different tribes and are tra- attached to tribal life. Mm-hmm. Even if they're living in the city, yes. there's one national language in Tanzania, which is Swahili, and all of the different tribes um, speak that language. Mm-hmm. Um, English is not used officially in Tanzania, except in commerce and so on. But mm-hmm. in, in, in government, in the government, it is strictly um, Swahili language. Mm-hmm. And all of the people, whether what, what, whatever tribe they come from, they all speak this as a as a as a as a universal or a national tongue. But in, in, in terms of belonging to a tribe, a clan, a region, mm-hmm. all of these people have attachment to, to different areas of Tanzania and therefore to access the land mm-hmm. apart from being able to buy land if they have moved to a city or a different village. Mm-hmm. Um, what, what, what would you say, Jerry, to persons who are listening who are thinking of traveling to Africa? Because, you know, we tend to go Ghana, Nigeria, um, in, in that region, and if not Ethiopia. Um, in recent times, we've been talking about Tanzania, um, some more, and also Kenya. But but what would be your advice? Or um, uh, talk to persons who are listening who are thinking, you know, I, I, I think I need to take a trip for, for holidays. I believe so. Um, 
No, as I said, this is my first trip to Tanzania. I've been to East Africa before, mm -hmm. but this is my first trip to East, to East Africa, to Tanzania. Mm -hmm. And, you know, um, we have strong and long connections with several West African countries, especially in Ghana and Nigeria. Right. On the other hand, a lot of the, the encouragement that has seemingly grown in recent decades, a lot of the encouragement that has that has, that has developed in recent decades. Mm -hmm. Some of it is commercial. A lot of the encouragement of, for people to, to come back to the West Coast of Africa is, is large. Is, is a lot of it has to do with encouraging them to bring their money. Mm -hmm. And it's not so much a, a welcoming. Yes, there are people in West Africa who welcome us home. But there's still a superiority feeling of some people that we are the children of slaves and we are sugar-eating um, Negroes and this kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Now, this kind of stigma is hardly present in East Africa, certainly the least in, in Tanzania. Mm -hmm. You know, and uh, the other thing is that I feel so embarrassed that I am only talking English. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, the average Africa speaks at least four languages usually. Yes, yes. They speak the dominant language, they speak the tribal language, mm -hmm. and they usually speak a European language, and they usually oh, speak... Yes. Arabic or Swahili. Yes, you understand? Yes. yes. And here I am now only speaking one language. But, um, I thought that after nearly 60 years of activity in the Pan African movement, myself as a teenager and as a Rastafari, mm -hmm. that I would have acquired some more. But anyway, not, not, <laughs> listen, not I, know exa I know exactly. Yeah. No, no, no. Listen, I had this very same conversation with myself this morning while I was getting ready to come to work. So I know exactly what you're thinking. I know where you're going with it. Um, but it's never too late, I said to myself. So I, I, and both of us, when you come forward, we talk about it. We need to get ourselves properly um, I I immersed in this thing. So, Jerry, we're totally out of time. I'm going to give you, I'm give you a minute to, to, to just um, wrap up, to say anything else that we, we didn't touch that you wanted to talk about. Yes, um, it, it, does, it seems to me that everybody that I meet and people who are here before me, when they come here, they feel so much welcome, more even more welcome than in Ethiopia. Oh. I am a Rastafari and we have strong links with Ethiopia. Yes. But I'm not going to be just sentimental. Yes. There is a there is a there is an affinity between East Africa um, uh, not only Ethiopia but also between Kenya and Tanzania that is very strong but it seems to be the strongest and in historically Tanzania only um, Tanzania is only Ethiopia that has has played a greater role in the formulation of the African Union and the organizing. Of mm -hmm. course, many other people have done other things, even Gaddafi and Libya, in turn, various countries lead away. Yeah. But everybody Ghana, that course. I meet who has come mm -hmm. here, mm -hmm. they remark about, about the welcome. And not only that, the Tanzanian people are very understated and, and, and mild mannered. Mm -hmm. But they are serious. Don't take them for any idiot. And mm -hmm. they don't seem to speak loudly, even when they have not dispute. They don't speak loud. Mm -hmm. And so many other things about them make us very comfortable here and know that there will be no losing for anybody who decides to invest their time in Tanzania. Jerry, thank you so much. Thank you so much, my brother. And uh, we'll keep in touch with you. Uh, but we, 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 I'm not quite sure about next week, but we'll talk about that off air because we're going into some different celebrations here on the island, as you know very well. Um, we're probably not paying much attention to that in Tanzania because it's an Islamic state. <laughs> but, but, but here it is all, all the rave. Uh, but thank you so much, Jerry. We'll talk soon. All right. All the best. And as I say, I have a 27-minute interview with Mrs. Betty Delfast that I will, I will play next week if I get the chance. Right. We'll talk. We'll talk. Uh, because we're going into Christmas, you see. And, uh, you, right, you know, okay, right. Okay. But, but we'll talk. We'll talk. Yes, yes. Uh -huh. All right. Thanks so much, Jerry. All right. Thank all right. You. Okay. And, and best wishes to all of the listeners and people of, of running Africa. Thanks on their behalf. All right, Professor Warner Zip, thank you so much for joining us inside of the Africa Forum this morning. Yes, good morning. Good to hear you again, Kabul. Right, I'm this right. Kabul, I guess. Yes, no, this is the second time I'm I'm, talk, I'm interviewing you in this space, right? Absolutely. We <laughs> talked about the Maroons, which in fact later on turned out to have an Austrian connection the topic that we were talking about, this bank issue. Yes. It was connected to the big wire 
card uh, scandal, oh. which was an Austrian who really was involved in it. So that's quite interesting. Isn't it though? Isn't it though? Wow. Welcome back to the space. I'm so happy to have you in the space. What a delightful book. What a book that has gone into the ins and outs and the, the nooks and the crannies of uh, Motor Baruchas, um live. You know, I read it and I said, Ah, it could easily be called the philosophies and opinions of Muta Baruka, you know. <laughs> no, it's not big enough for that. I, I really need to leave that to you Jamaicans and Africans to write that. Yes. That, that would be much more voluminous. Yes. And, and it should be, it should be done. Yeah, I, I agree with you. It's a brilliant book, though, so thank you for this. Muta Baruka, the verbal oh, swordsman. You. You're a co-author with Sebastian. Yes, and I think from the beginning I need to give the biggest credit to him. Mm -hmm. The book is actually based on his research and um, his master thesis in anthropology. I was the supervisor, and I guess um, the biggest bunch of work was actually done by him. Yeah. It was then up to me to sort of, yeah, bring it to a publication level. Yeah. All right. So talk to us about that. Uh, he, he was scheduled to be on today, but I understand he's traveling. So tell us about that. Yeah. Background. He's in yes. Uganda. Ah. Oh. He's in, he's in Uganda with his family. His yes. wife is Ugandan. Oh, okay. And he's there with their, their daughter and yeah, since mm. a couple of days. Yes. Yes. And, and my bad because we, we, we pushed this interview back, uh, two weeks. But, but, um, exactly. all right. So, so please, um, tell us a little ab about that part of it because this is, as you said, Sebastian's master, um, thesis. So he did a thesis on Mutabaruka. Yes, and particularly on the radio shows. That yes. was really the agenda. Because I, I think, I mean, most people, reggae fans particularly, Area FM listeners, they are aware um, of the music overseas. Mm -hmm. In Jamaica, of course, everybody is aware of the radio shows. But overseas, well, some fanatics, I would say, listen to them online. Mm -hmm. But most people are not so much aware where this actually um, the public intellectual Muta Baruka saying and what is his impact on Jamaican and Caribbean society at large. And that was the intention of this book. Mm -hmm. And uh, what was, the, what, what, what did the process entail? Uh, this must have taken hours and hours and hours of listening back. Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. um, Sebastian spent well, probably up to two years at least mm -hmm. um, selecting the programs because I mean it's amazing Multa Baruka has about 8,000 hours of public appearances on air mm. I mean I, I hardly know of any other person globally mm. who really comes that's, to that level yeah, so it was very difficult for Sebastian mm. Um, to actually select those parts that he thought in, in cooperation with me that would mm -hmm. represent some major strains of uh, Muta Baruka's intellectual work. Mm -hmm. So what were you looking for in particular? Well, different things from his involvement in history, um, post-colonial claims, reparations, Overall justice, equal rights and justice, particularly to black people. That That's the main thing that the book focuses on. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, we also talk about his um, uh, public interaction, intellectual work in Jamaica, mm -hmm. because that's a man with a lot of influence. Yes. I mean, um, from my experiences in Jamaica, spending years, actually, in some places in the country, mm -hmm. like in the countryside, in Maroon Town, uh, mm -hmm. Shaw Castle, remote places. Mm -hmm. I would know that my closest friends, Leon Hill and his family and, and many others, they would listen every week to the programs of Muta Baruka. Mm -hmm. And that would form the discussions the next day. Yes. And um, so that's really an impact. He right. Very prolific, actually, actually, because long before, and I like what you've done, uh, and Sebastian, with in terms of how the book is ordered, looking at um, Word, Sounds and Power, for example, is the first um, uh, ch chapter, which looks at um, the movie days, 
um, the rise of Muta as, as a poet, um, going back to Marcus Garvey and the Black Power movement in Jamaica uh, and his experiences mm-hmm. from from the 12 tribes of Israel to, to Nyabingi and so on, mm-hmm. and Baba Shanti. And, uh, there's just so much there in that first chapter and then talking about Rastafari as philosophy uh, of liberation yeah. so that you, you uh, and Sebastian were able to situate Muta um, in in that um that, that, that the development of Jamaica literally outside long before he entered media, long before he entered radio, that this was his yes. life's work. Yes, yes. Well, that interview particularly is actually Muta's works. Yes. Um, we recorded it on camera mm-hmm. some 15 years ago in 2008. Yes. Um, that was me and my wife, mm-hmm. my then wife, Manuela. Yes. Um, and we actually released and published that long reasoning. It was just, I think, the night before he appeared on stage at um, the Morgan Heritage, the East Fest Festival. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And he talked about two and a half hours on record. Yes. And we transcribed it. And then with Muta, we selected those passages that he actually wanted to have released. Mm-hmm. There were some more biographical, some more uh, personal ones in it. Yes. I actually, to be honest, I wanted to get that published, but mm-hmm. he would like to leave that to an autobiography mm-hmm. later on in his um, life. Mm-hmm. And he felt he would like a stronger focus on the radio shows. Mm-hmm. So that mm-hmm. part, he kind of left it out. But the reasonings on Rastafari, on Marcus Garvey and so forth, we mm-hmm. kept in the book because it actually situates mm-hmm. um mm-hmm. Whatever Muta Baruka talks on, on your radio, on IRFM, mm-hmm. in his personal experiences. And we had a long discussion with, with Muta. He wasn't sure if he wants that biographical part mm-hmm. that much. Mm-hmm. Actually, he didn't mm-hmm. want it, yes. to be honest. And right. it was me who, who tried to convince him, saying that people in Europe, in America, in Asia, in Africa, <laughs> they are not so much aware of who you are. So yes. I think they need an idea. Mm-hmm. of what the person Muta Baruka stands for in right. order to understand what he talks on air. Yeah. The mystique is, is, is good sometimes. So, so here we, so here we have, uh, yeah. you, you say, uh, in, in the book also, obviously, um, Sebastian's thesis, uh, which you are the supervisor. And then we really want to talk to Sebastian about the work that he put in also another time. But, um, there is, uh, on page 50 and 51 where, um, where it says that, uh, okay, let me see. Um, okay, good. When we proposed uh, to him a book title referring to him as Rastafari, namely the Rastafari Verbal Swordsman, thinking to attract a broader audience interested in Rastafari in general, Muta refused. Talk to us about that. Yeah, well, you know, he's very careful. Um, he speaks for himself. Basically, right? It, because you, sorry, let me interrupt a bit. Be, because you do go on to say that he did not want to make it appear as if he took on the role of an official spokesman. Exactly. Yes. He's very careful with that because yes. you see, even before in in a, in an edited volume called Rastafari: A Universal Philosophy mm-hmm. in the Third Millennium. There was a chapter by Muta Baruch of a speech he gave at the University of Vienna yes. as a keynote speaker for a conference that I organized. Mm-hmm. And again, I tried to um, propose to him to have um, Rastafari something in the title. Mm-hmm. But he would say no. He doesn't want to be mistaken for speaking for Rasta. Mm-hmm. And I think that's very important for him that he stands for himself. Yes. Um, yes. And he he doesn't want that kind of critique that he is sort of, well, pushing himself into a position of um, official spokesman. Mm-hmm, and, mm-hmm. and that's quite important because, you know, sometimes, um, as you can see on the Internet, there are strong voices of Rastafarians um, yes. speaking against Muta when he criticizes the Bible and so on. Yes, Sometimes and I do understand. I do, and, and, and this is why I foregrounded this because I know that he is seen um, in many quarters, even here in Jamaica. I mean, majority of Jamaicans see him as that, you know, as an, as, as 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 a leader within Rastafari. So could easily take on the mantle of 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 a spokesman for Rastafari, but that within himself. He understands the nuances 
and that, you know, and this is why I pinpointed this because I thought, wow, this is so muta <laughs> to have said I don't want to Absolutely. be. Absolutely. Yeah. hundred uh, percent. I fully yes. agree. Yes. Uh, also in the book, and, and I've read the book, you know, cover to cover, really, really enjoyed reading it. I found myself laughing too, and I'll talk about that in a minute because I, I, you know, I didn't know that I was in the book in this way, right? <laughs> Muta saying that, you know, he loved, I used to, my, my office used to be upstairs. <laughs> well, and then Muta has always said something. And I didn't expect it to make the book, but it made the book. But anyway, so no, go on. Um. <laughs> yeah, well, I just wanted to say he, he's a person who is really giving credits. He when, does. Whenever he. Yeah receives something, mm -hmm. whenever he receives an input, for instance, yeah. from his empress, from yes. um, Amba, yes. Empress Amba, he yes. would mention that. Yes. And then many, many times to us, he mentioned, well, you know, what I'm doing on RFM, stepping yes. razor and, and cutting yeah. edge, yeah. it couldn't be done without the support of others. Yeah, because this is a book about, about others. You yes. come first. <laughs> well, look at so, that, because um, I, I tease him all the while. And, and I noticed that he, he in, in writing, in, in, in um, autographing the, the book to me, in signing the book to me, he says, um, Kabo Ma'ad Keru, keep strong for Africa. If you fall, I, I will catch you. Because I always, because he has a song, I catch you if you fall. And I've always said to him, I know you'll catch me if I fall. Sometimes literally, you know, we might be hosting a, a program together. And, and if the cheer rickety or the cheer is not, un, if it's unstable, you know, I said, Muta, I know you'll catch me if I fall. And he always says, I'll catch you if you fall. <laughs> so. Absolutely. Yeah. You see, I guess yeah. if you have Muta as an enemy, <laughs> you must be really, you must be really, really worried. Yeah. Um, but, but if but, you have him as a friend and supporter, yes. you know, you have an army standing behind you. Yeah. It is a brilliant book. As you talk about Muta giving credit, I mean, throughout the book, something that struck me, um, early in the book, in the acknowledgements, actually, I was so taken aback because I've never seen anything like that. Because um, all the all the presenters, guest presenters, and presenters who work at IRFM who have uh, sobbed for Muta um, when he's traveling out of the country and so on over time, they are all named in the book, and that was very surprising um, to me. I'm trying to because yeah, it's, it's pretty says early. A lot. Yeah, it, it says a lot about him because I mean he never conceives um, himself to be just the verbal swordsman. He's yes. just taking that role to enforce and you know um, big up actually the communal struggle, the, the collective struggle. Yeah, and let um, me just go through. Let me just let me just go through the names because it says past hosts. I didn't even remember um, some of them, and I was a person who would have asked them to sit in for Muta. Um, Tony mm -hmm. Rebel, well, I obviously remember Tony. Tony Rebel, Kishima Francis, Carolyn Cooper, Robert Williams, Miguel Lorne, Jelani Naya, Flo O'Connor, Mitzi Williams, Barbara Blake Hanna, Ivo Cooper, Franklin McKnight, Mark Wignall. I remember those days with Mark Wignall. Um, Digital Chris, Amber Crowell. Louis Moister and Kim Samaj. And then it goes into the producers. Um, some who have left Area FM, Joy Morgan, Samantha Mitu, Tony and Linda, Tracy and Morris, Shamara Preston, Sondra Shaw, Simone Brown Keys. And the technical operators. And I'm saying this because the, the audience that's listening near and, I mean, globally and otherwise would recognize these names. You know, Wilbert Wisdom, DJ Neil, DJ Brian, um, Dane Young, DJ Kamar, Shane Clark. Nigel Durant, Nicholas Francis. I mean, these people are people who Muta have acknowledged in the book. This is this is this is phenomenal, isn't it? Uh, absolutely, and yeah. I think you know he's doing the same for Reggae. Actually, yeah. he's never leaving out those artists that have been forgotten, and even those artists who never quite made it. You know, yes, yes. and that's very important too. And what you just said, I mean. Having such a show and later on two shows for more than 30 years, mm -hmm. it's amazing. It and is. he is a very popular artist as well. Yes, so yes. he was traveling a lot to South Africa and many mm -hmm. other places. Yes. So without those presenters stepping in, 
the show wouldn't have stood until today. Yes. And that's very important. Yes. And perhaps at this point, uh, if, if I may, mm -hmm. uh, a quick time out. Three days ago, um, a very famous dub poet passed on, oh, yes. Benjamin Sefetaya. Yes. Um, yes. I think he's one of the big five, from, right. uh, apart from Muta, yes. Okur Nura, Michael Smith, um, and... Um, who, and, and, who, and a good friend, is. and a good friend for, to, to, to Muta Lit also. Johnson. Yeah, Johnson. we pay tribute to him. I, I, I sat in for Muta on his program on Thursday, Gun, and we pay tribute to him, um, in that space, yeah. to Benjamin Zephaniah. Um, so, so thank yeah. you for, 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 for raising it here again. Yeah. yeah. That's what I wanted to say. So, yes. of course, he will do that immediately because that was a very powerful voice. Yes. And not just in music, the books he wrote. Mm -hmm. I just recently read again Refugee. Mm -hmm. I mean, I can just um, <laughs> propose it for you to read. It's such an amazing Yeah, no, it's book. interesting you should anyway. say that because when I sat in for Muta, I said we could easily call this program, we could all be refugees, you know, um, yes. in terms of paying tribute to, to Benjamin Zephaniah. So, yes. Um, there's yes, a chapter, there's exactly. a, there's a chapter in the book, um, well, 4-3, chapter 4-3, um, where you talk about, um, Crime prevention and proposals for solution going through Muta's programs, of course. And this is one of the chapters that this is one of the, uh, yeah, the chapters in the book that I found really illuminating because it kind of, you know, I go back and, and I said for years, you know, um, activists and advocates and, 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 uh, uh people like Muta have been raising, um, the, some of these solutions in the spaces, interviewing all of the actors and, 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 and I'm talking about the, the, the players who could, who can make a difference. And yet we still see a situation in Jamaica where crime is, uh, instead of us dealing with this and instead of, of, of um, of addressing, um, the situation, we see a situation where crime is ballooning out of proportion. Um, so, so this is a, a, a chapter I think that is really, really, um, Earth shattering for me. It says repeatedly, Muta Baruka plays his part in crime prevention campaigns or crime curbing initiatives. In his broadcast, he proposes pertinent ideas to policymakers to tackle the island's crime issues. Nevertheless, he demands from the authorities the same positive attitudes towards a common interest that he sees as his own responsibility. And, um, yeah. so, so I suppose, uh, out of that, and, and I want you to comment on this, that Muta as a poet, Muta as the author, Muta as the, um, the radio announcer, the radio presenter, that he has always foregrounded, um, solutions to things like crime and violence on the island. Yeah, absolutely. That's what I really appreciate. I appreciate love. Um, w with Muta, he's not just talking about Babylon, Babylon, Babylon. He's really um, getting to ground levels how to improve situations that he finds terrible, terrible. And mm -hmm. um, I remember even him going on stage at Rebel Salute and talking about the crime situation and actually saying who is not afraid if he sees um, a Toyota Corolla with black tainted um, window screens behind him. Mm -hmm. And yeah, mm -hmm. people applauded him for mm -hmm. it. And I guess it can only be the society at large to, mm -hmm. to solve that situation. I mean, mm -hmm. um, it's, it's nothing that makes life nice in Jamaica. Yeah. And in the book, you say, um, let's contemplate some of the different aspects that Muta talks about to achieve a lower crime rate and establish a safer um, social environment. He proposes concrete measures in terms of social reform, be it job creation programs or entrepreneurship encouragement. In addition, he supports crime counteraction um, through restrictions of dangerous weapons or even acquisition of guns in private possession by government. He also speaks out for banning violent movies from TV or at least rating them as parental guidance are uh, suggested. And then you say other suggestions include seeking advice from other countries in formerly crime and uh, violence affected nations and cities. Uh, I, 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 I want to make a point here because I remember that for years he tried um, through us and the producers here to get uh, Rudy Giuliani um, on the program mm -hmm. with him 
And I think I, I'm not, I can't remember if he actually interviewed Rudy Giuliani, but I did, I do remember that I made those calls. He, and this is on Mooch's behalf. He was trying everything to get him to say, how did you manage mm-hmm. to, um, curb crime in New York? That was when Rudy Giuliani was Rudy Giuliani, right? How did you manage to curb yep. crime in New York? And how can Jamaica learn from what you have done in New York? So we had made many calls to Giuliani's office, had conversations with them, and were in the process of setting up that interview. But I can't remember if we actually, if Muta actually did that interview. I'm not sure. No, I, I wouldn't be certain. I, I would rather mm-hmm. think no. But I'm, yes. you, you must ask him. But at, at least those parts where, where he talked about that kind of experience, mm-hmm. those are the parts that Sebastian looked into carefully, mm-hmm. transcribed it, and actually put it in the book. Mm-hmm. And yeah, I mean, it's very difficult to curb down crime. It mm-hmm. is very difficult. I mean, just telling people not to kill others, if, if it would have helped, hundreds of thousands of reggae artists have done that in song. Yes, Songs yes. on black on black violence. Yes. It, didn't, it didn't really help. Because yes. the situation is as such that the alternatives for a lot of youth in, in those areas, mm-hmm. in, in those garrison areas, in Kingston particularly, but not only in Kingston, don't find any other alternatives. They mm-hmm. don't find jobs. Not mm-hmm. everybody can be a register. Mm-hmm. So what mm-hmm. can you do then? And and once you get involved in some kinds of drug trade and so on um, you almost need a weapon mm-hmm. and if the weapons are so much available which Muta criticizes yes. that you can easily get it for very very cheap prices yes, yes. Um, then yeah that's what you do it gives you immediate power and it gives you immediate access mm-hmm. to financial means yeah it must have, uh, to, to move to another point it must have been uh for sebastian and then for yourself as a supervisor uh a a a, a treat to go through um the, the those parts of 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 the program and of Muta's um radio programs that dealt with as you call it in in chapter 5 you, the european remnants christmas church and state that must have been quite something isn't it well, actually, we wouldn't have written that book um, <laughs> if we were not critical of the European remnants. <laughs> yes. actually, that kind of critique motivated me from the very beginning of my mm-hmm. career as a student, yes. some 40 plus years ago. You would have to ask people like Leon Hill, with whom I spent um, many, many months in, yes. in Maroon Town and Shaw Castle in, in his family. He would certainly recall his conserva- conversations from the beginning. Yeah. So actually, that brought me to Jamaica, that brought me to Reggae, that brought me to Peter Tosh and mm-hmm. then Muta Baruka and so forth. Mm-hmm. Because actually, I'm, I'm the same with my country and with my continent, Europe, and my system yeah. as Muta is with the Jamaican system. Yes. Critical. Yes. And and I think you you need to be that, otherwise you're just not a thinker. Mm-hmm. And um, so on that level, we are doing pretty much the same. We are criticizing yes. what we see wrong in our societies. And I mean, mm-hmm. basically the situation today between Europe and Africa, yeah. um, it's not very good. No, not and, at all. And that mistake goes back um, to, of course, to colonialism, but I'm talking now about our lifetime. Mm-hmm. It goes mm-hmm. back to rebuilding um, equal relationships after colonialism, and that hasn't happened. Yes, yes. Not to the degree that we would have wanted it to be. Mm-hmm. And actually, reggae to me, to a large extent, I mean, is a bridge builder. Mm-hmm. Even if, if people talk about fire upon Rome, fire upon this and fire upon that, mm-hmm. they come to places like Rome to yes. do that. And they do it in front of um, um, Romans. Mm-hmm. And that's what Muta said in many of his talks at the university and so forth. I have mm-hmm. that on record. Mm-hmm. Um, that's amazing. And it's telling you that those links between people are possible and actually the book is an example of it. Yes. It, it is a brilliant book and once again I want to congratulate uh, Sebastian. Um, uh, did he get a distinction um, for his master's yes. work? Yes, I, I'm sure. Yes, of course. Yes. Well, I had to grade it. It was yes. a very good thesis. Yes. Otherwise, it would have been very difficult to make such a book out of it. Yes. So, um, he, he has done a great job and 
Mutter as well, he usually acknowledges him first and he's saying, this professor here has done very little. <laughs> but anyway, I felt I did a little bit, but the, the major part of work actually was Sebastian's. Yes, but yes. again, the groundwork was Mutas mm -hmm, because mm -hmm. without his talks and his speeches on the radio mm -hmm. and his interventions, Sebastian couldn't have written that. And, you know, yes. um, let me say one more thing, perhaps mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. way we see it from the outside, that mm -hmm. is from Europe or from Austria. Mm -hmm. Muta Baruka is not just an icon. He's something very, very peculiar for Jamaica. Mm -hmm. I, I don't think that someone doing that for 30 years and saying any political ill in such an explicit way, you know, mm -hmm. emphasizing any political ill in such an explicit way yes. could remain on air in even Austria, and Austria is fairly liberal. I was thinking, about, you know, me. I was thinking about that this morning. Actually, I'm um, just driving to work because, and and I thought the very same thing. You know that uh, within this, this discussion on of freedom of speech, uh, that there yeah. that IRFM does provide the space that Muta has been doing this for 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 so long, and. Uh, uh, and at times is even cited when people are saying that, well, there is freedom of speech uh, for 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 journalists and for media workers and so on. And then I thought again to myself, but sometimes uh, the conversations are a little bit skewed because they don't know how much pressure the the presenter comes under and that you do yep. that, you do that. Um, and then you're ostracized and you're not invited to their parties and you're, you're left out. And, and, you know, so I, I was having that conversation in my head this morning. And then I came right back to where you left it now, which is that in many other countries, though, it, this program would not necessarily would have been on air. So, so, so there is a point to be made there. Yes. Do that in China or in mm. Russia or in the mm. Emirates mm. Yeah. or in many African countries, in fact. Yeah. Uh, you're not only in jail, you probably don't survive it. Yeah. And yeah. In, in that in that sense, I believe Jam uh, Mutabaruka is perhaps the biggest proof of the vitality of democracy in Jamaica that you could ever find. What a conundrum, because on the other hand, it is the, 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 the reverse is also true. In terms of the extent yep. to which people like Muta um, are, are, are ostracized by the system because of what of, you say, of because of who you are, you know. So, of so course. yes. So there is still that on the other to, side. To be honest with you, um, long time ago, thirty years ago, when I would listen to Cutting Edge in, in the car somewhere in Kingston or in the countryside, um, I was wondering. Can he survive for very long? <laughs> because yes. he was criticizing those in power, those yes. with economic and executive power. Yes. And we know so many people who have been killed in Jamaica. Yes. Um, from Peter Tosh to many others. Bob yes. Marley was shot at. I mean, yes. imagine. Free so I, I was, at, at the time I was thinking, I'm not sure. If, yeah, if, and, and, yeah, but the, the, the threats come in, and I'm sure he'll tell you about those. The threats do come, but 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 the point is well taken that there is that on one on the one hand, but they but quietly, you know, there are those threats that come in, and and the refusal to 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 engage, you know, because of 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 who you are and because of what you say. So so there is also of that. Course. So just to balance things a bit. Um, but once again, just to say thank you, thank you. Thanks, Sebastian, for the research. Thank you for overseeing this research, for supervising this research, and for publishing this book, Multiple Book of the Verbal Swordsman. Who is the publisher? Um, Ian Randall Publishers? Ian Randall Publishers, again, yeah. Right. I've, I had very good contacts with him, and actually... In the meantime, I believe we are friends. I've met him many times. Yes. He published a number of my books, and mm -hmm. I know that he's very friendly with Muta, too. They've met yes. at conferences oh, in yes. Vienna and so on. Yes. So yeah. I think when we, when we talked to them and said, we have a book on Muta, are you interested? <laughs> Immediately came back a response, yes, 100. Ah, brilliant, 100 brilliant. Times. Brilliant. Um, love that. Uh, the book is going to be launched. It's, it's, I, I, I'm not, I'm not at liberty to say much more than that, but that, um, you'll hear more to the listeners, um, once that happens. Once again, one is upset. Professor, thank you so much, 
uh, for the work that you continue to do. And thank you so much, and Sebastian, also. We'll have another discussion with Sebastian to go a little bit deeper into um, his research and what he found and how we do it, the methodologies, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But thank you so much, Prof. Thank you, and thank you for your brilliant work on, on IRFM. And, of course, thank Muta Baruka for having that trust in us to do that book together with him. All right. That's thank the most you. important part. You're welcome. Thank you so much. Thanks. Only Optical Elements has the latest technology lenses and frames to suit your taste and budget. Visit us at 67 Halfway Tree Road, online at OpticalElementsJA.com or call 929-8284. Optical Elements, vision in style. The time by Optical Elements is... Now, six minutes after eight o'clock... Uh, just once again to say the book is called Muta Baruka, The Verbal Swordsman. We have been reading this book in the uh, book club, the Running African Book Club. The foreword is by Professor Carolyn Cooper. And really, it is a very, very, very good read. So if you've been reading it, published by Ian Randall Publishers, if you've been reading, good. If you've finished it, we can have a conversation about it. But um, very, very good read. Uh, so take up a copy and get your copy and and read. All right. But, but, but Muta, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, look here, man. Look here. We don't want to say that, you know. <laughs> no, watch out. It, it's late last night. I come in. Oh God. It's, a, it's one thing, you know. We did on the cruise there. Eh? Yes. So I did. Well, I did tell someone I said I come back because so they will ask me if I could do the shoot tomorrow. Oh. Oh, okay. So I tell her, yeah, I will come back soon. But yes. Yeah, me hear me hear the interview man. Yes, man, me read the book, man. And Sebastian was <laughs> supposed to be on, but he's in he, traveling to Uganda. Uganda, Africa. Uganda, yes, Africa. yes. But yeah, um, yeah, but... It, it's a brilliant book, Muta. Is, it, I mean, I think I don't know what you think. Well, obviously, you must have, have signed off and at it at some point. But I think that it really brought um yeah. the, the programs to life, to you to life. And it, it really is, and, and then because it is also done from an academic perspective, even yeah, though it's yeah. still easily understood. Um, uh, we can tell, yeah. tell you what, we can tell you what, we have never said. Mm-hmm. We have never said. Yeah. All right. So, people usually do them kind of book there when the person dead. <laughs> so, so when they come to me, I say, I say, I, that's true, I mean, they say it on the radio to me, say, oh, two white, two white people come to come, you know, do a food program pan do a thing pan this the, the, the program them. Yes. Them say them professor tell them man. so mm-hmm. the when them send when them tell them about the book, you know, it deeply think we think about it, you know. Mm-hmm. Come and Jack is long at the house and deep that thing when I said, So white people have come again for coming to that but we, we, we think back on it, most mm-hmm. of the book them where white people write about artists and things is when them dead. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so we didn't have an opportunity now to direct what yes. is in the book. Yes, yes. So Mister, look at now. Me give the permission. If you send the script, come give me. Before I make me right. read it first. Yes, man. It's when I send the script. Me and Jackie sit down in the house, you know, mm-hmm. and I find the whole oh, thing. <laughs> line, <laughs> line up and line please. I go through the thing. You know, it, it's about half of the book. Me take out, you know. Well, yeah, I, I, I kind of heard him saying that because the 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 biographical part of it is it seems because I heard him reference that a few times to say that there was some things that you you didn't want in it right away. Say, yeah, because yeah. I said, sure, you know. So but when my Jackie don't go through it, I mean, I said it come to about half of the book. I'm send it back again. Yeah. Me and him go over and I said, why me no want? I said, look at now. What do you mean, why me no want that? <laughs> me no want that in there. But Simple. but Buddha, there, there's another aspect to it, right? Because this is. Um, somebody's thesis, right? So before it was a book, it was university students who are doing their master's thesis and, and they chose you and, and especially your work in, 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 in the media, um, as their, as a thesis question. Okay. Uh, right. So, so, so it's also part of, so there is that. So I suppose all of what you, you would have taken out would have been submitted as part of their thesis, right? Yeah. Right. Yeah. And then there's yeah, a book. I love it. Yeah. yeah. Wow, and I'm furthermore, now, Carolyn, the years, long before them come up in the picture, Carolyn said, why am I going to do a book about the philosophy and opinion of the Mota Baroka? But yes, uh, I okay. actually approached a brethren. Mm-hmm. 
And I say, look at why are you doing this thing here? And me have a PA you have to do it. Well, it looks like the PA and get your mouth so nobody will do it. <laughs> if I don't look at it, I don't know what's what. So I say, all right, so Carolyn, no. We decide to say, Carolyn is the right one now. Because you know yes. when white people listen to it, them hear something different what you never say. Right, yes. Them, dance, so them dancing to the, the guitar. Yeah, Carolyn now is the one now who have to make sure say, when we say, it's with them right. Yeah, yeah. So I never have no doubt about how it's going to turn out. And I see that Carolyn was um, involved. She also she also wrote the foreword to the book, um, yes. which is brilliant. Yes, she's the most, brilliant. Yes. And yeah. she was one of the ones who do, actually do the, 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 the program too. Yes. But yes. I was not here. But I'll right. go back to some historical thing. Mm-hmm. You see, Mr. Young, I hear mention about, you know, the, the freedom of speech parade. Yeah, hold think. up, Muta, hold up, because I have a break, and, and I, so let me just take the break and come forward, because you and me know how it go already. Hold on. The freedom of speech. All right, I'm going to tell Mr. Young now. Mm-hmm. All right. You see, Mr. Young, mm-hmm. you see, you, you, mm-hmm. and Mr. Young, I'm going to mention Mr. Young first. Mm-hmm. You see, Mr. Young, in the early days, I already hear them talk about freedom of speech. Cutting it just one of the program where them call Mr. Young to take off for the radio. Mm-hmm. And two Mr. Young knows it's an independent thing and a team theme things. Mm-hmm. Mr. Young said, Look at him, look, him said to me all the while. I'm going to say it on the radio. I'm going to say, mm-hmm. him say, Look, you know, I don't care them what I say, you know. As long as you don't put no hole in my pocket. <laughs> that's it is true. Mr. I be a witness, so I know it, yeah, it, it is. Mr. Young true. Answer to yes. You know, yes. <laughs> As a man, I'm like, you know, I'm controlled by a bad person. Look at mm-hmm. man. I'm like, 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 I'm Take them over go on behind the behind, and this is what I was trying to say a while ago without saying too much that the threats that you get as individuals and then the threats that come into the station up to today day, you know, yes. um, to get yes. these programs off air, cutting edge, stepping razor, uh, uh, and, uh, and, um, Run and running African. This is, this is the kind of things that we have to deal with behind the scenes. So that on the one hand, it appears as if you have freedom of speech, but on the other hand, because I refer is the kind of station that it is and the independence and the, and the foundation yes, that yes. Mr. Young set and Chad came and followed that foundation. Debbie follows that foundation as a managing director now. So that, the, so that there is a kind of an installation, um, for, for the freedom of speech at Ari yes. FM. Yes. And the, the, the you know? next thing about it, you know, though, yes. you see when we started out and the youth, them used to listen to the program, them used to have their eyes to listen to it. <laughs> all over the world. I remember. Yeah. Yes, it's true. Some the eye. And what happened now is that yeah. those people who could have really do something, them never take it serious because they said, this is a barefoot Rasta man for the radio. They just a talk and talk. Mm. So nobody never take him serious. You understand? And so they, did, they, 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 they did take you serious to a point. Let me tell you how uh, they no, took you. Know, very... I'll go to that. Yes. I'll go to that. It's because yeah. when they realize uh, they use them a little Right. Them start to really say what we especially when it come out to the religious part of the, 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 the argument. Yes, yes. They were very frustrated, but it did get out of hand already. Yeah. It did gone get out of hand already. Yeah. Because up to today, you, 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 you look on them and you hear them say, boy, I'm out of this, I'm out of yes, that. Yes. But they, me know what they say because me yeah. have people amongst them where we tell you what them say. Yeah. You know, Muta, the impact, the impact on, you know, I was, I was there, so, you know, um, a bearing witness, the impact of a cutting edge on political thought and religious, um, uh, dogma in Jamaica is phenomenal. And, and that's, I think, would take a, a whole other book. I, I think that, you know, there, there is space for that. That, yes, that hasn't yes. really been exorcised, if you will, yes. yet. Yes. That, that yes. impact is phenomenal. It don't start yet yes. because it's a, I think that this book is going to show them now, say, it's not a Jamaican thing we did work with. Right. It's a universal thing right now. And global. anywhere we go, any, any thousands of people in a, in a show or anything, them bring up the cutting edge. Where would they find the boat? Yeah. Where would they find the boat, you know? You're not surprised to know. Every time I pass somebody, them say, well, I'm cutting edge. Well, I'm stepping <laughs> into that. <laughs> yes. And, I, 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 
a YouTube never see it, you know. Yes. I, I listen to them on the street by YouTube, you know. Yes, yes. So you must know, say, the, the, the weird phenomenal, I'm not to say it myself, is that Ooh. when the youth them take up the program and put it on cutting edge, Every week, like if it went to the program on a Wednesday, Thursday, mm-hmm. you see what I say on it. If it's mm-hmm. Thursday, you see Friday, you see mm-hmm. what I mm-hmm. That is something where them can't ignore, them yes. can't stop it. Yeah. It can't stop. No, no. And because if, 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 if Mota Baruka get shot around the corner, they so no. Them Ancestors say, forbid. It, it, it's a problem. <laughs> it's a problem. Yeah. It's a problem. You yeah. understand? So we're not going to stop, and I saw we stay, and it's just we like. And that's why I'm going to say, you. I mean, I mean, whatever I say, but I have been worked. I've been working. I've been so, Mocha, what can you tell us about the launch? I've been working at night. What, what, can, what can you tell us about the launch? At any time, any time I do anything, some say, you know, like I say, Shamara go tell him this, or anyone at Brown Jai go which tell is him far, this. And, and which was far and it hardly ever. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, right. it, it, it's like... Where Calling did... the people them name is, is, yeah. is, is important to me. Oh, yeah. Especially that, you. That especially you. I tell you, Cabo. Especially you. Ah, uh, Muta, right? man, you make me feel away. Me say, look, I mean, I mean away good because uh, thank you for that. You know, Muta, I wanna, I was so frightened when me mock up my name in the book because I, I just did not know. I you know, in the book. I know, and I, I was sh- totally shocked. Maybe I said to ask, look there, look there. <laughs> me name in the yeah, book. Yeah, man, yeah, man, because <laughs> me, me know where you did go. When you upstairs yeah. and me downstairs, yeah, and yeah. any time, me, me do a little thing, I you, you, you yeah. say, go tell him that, go tell him this, go tell him that. Even me yeah. used to make fun at Jai. Remember me used to make fun at <laughs> <Sure>. <laughs> Oh boy, you know what? I, I need to, I hope Jai gets an invitation to this thing, you know, because me don't know. I don't have a number for you. Me have a number for you. I tell Jamara, I must tell everybody where in the book, give them a send, send them something, I tell Jamara. All right, so I will send you. Yes, yeah, so, so I, I hope so, because I don't have the name of the people, they might think, you know. I, I'm going to send, so I can forward something to Jai, right? Yeah, so, so, so reach out to now, I tell you, say, Cabo. Yes. Do what you do, and mm. if you want a vacative, I know. Yes. I don't wish to say that we don't care. We don't care. I know. Yeah. So it's just that. It's yeah. just that. I know. And, 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 you know, this is, this is something that is not really understood so much in the, in the space that, um, you know, the, the, the support that I know that I have, it, it is it, it, sometimes when you take the microphone, you know, and you open your mouth and you say something, um, and people understand that there is some serious support. And like you always say, you'll catch me if I fall. Oh, yeah, man, man. <laughs> He was catching too, you know. <laughs> and he was catching too. Oh, you know, yes. So, yes. Yeah, man. And, you know, we just want to say, we give thanks and I'll mm-hmm. say the book I go launch. No, you yeah. never say it, but, but the book oh, I go yeah. launch. Tell me. Well, uh, the book I go launch this week. You know, All right, this okay. So we're going to launch. So. Yeah. And you is the, 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 the speaker. You I couldn't check nobody else. Yeah. Oh, I mean, I'm saying, every time I think about it, I'm saying, I'm going to move to you know, <laughs> <laughs> Only more time, I know, sir. But anyway, yeah, no, yeah, man, yeah man, I have a situation in crime, man. You have a situation in crime, but <laughs> it's I mean, I tell you, say, it, it's, it's, I'm mean, not here, yeah. no other radio station. I'm mean, yeah. not here, no other one. I send yeah. things to them from the radio where if well, you're not there, you're not going to say the same thing. Yeah, what, what we are saying. Yeah. Yeah. You have now said the same thing. So yeah. the, me not hear you say nothing where me not agree with. Yes. You understand? And that sounds weird, but it's true. No, it worked. It worked work both ways. Yeah. So yeah. me just have to give thanks to Debbie again to yes. continue. Yes. Because she could have easily say, you know, this and that. But she tell me, say, why well, I have to go and she have picked the door. And she, far, I listen. <laughs> and she come, and, and listen and, and she also uh, has come under a lot of pressure um for of for, for our programs so yeah. so I think rightfully to say um yeah give thanks for for, for the managing director Debbie, Debbie and Duar for for yeah, keeping the yeah. programs on air them come up for we hard the other day as you know Muta hard 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 yeah. but here oh, we are nah. here we are <laughs> so yeah. Muta, oh, 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 Shamara with her nervous self. <laughs> that all when you never tell her, she must go to me. She get nervous for me to say something that she can't believe to me. I say, you know, because yes. she thinks that she will get in her trouble because mm. she doesn't know what me I said before me say it. And mm. that's your business because I'm not scripting program. No, 
No. Not skip it. You know, me just yeah. say it. You know, so. Yeah, man, give down. And yes, all the people them going at the book. Yeah, yeah please. We should have book. We can get the book because obviously I have my it, copy it, in hand. Ian Randall, I think after the last, uh, it's there in some books. So, you know, he went in the nation, I nation have it. Right. And I think it's there. Where, where the books? Where the books? It, but, is it a songstress? It's probably a songstress. Well, it's Ian, yes. it's Ian Randall publisher. So, you know, it is in a lot of places. Yeah, and then right. after, right. after Tuesday now, it, it, it well out there. All right, okay. Thank you All so right. much, Muta. We talk soon. All right, back with you inside of the Africa Forum. This is Running Africa, and we're standing by to speak with my next uh, guest, Chief Richard Curry. I know they're having uh, some electrical power outage situation in Akampong at Chempong, but let us see if we can get through to Chief Richard Curry. Interesting thing happen- happening in England, you know. Which is Sunak. It looks as if his days are numbered. I could be wrong, but this is what the commentators are saying. The ones that I usually listen to anyway. And so it seems, and there, but there is a conversation. There's a discussion on the table. I don't know if they're just throwing it out there. The Daily Mail crew, those, you know, rabid ones that there might be a call back for Boris, <laughs> for Boris Johnson. Uh, because there is uh, in, in elements in the UK that are saying, seems as if he's the only one who can save them now. Uh, they are really uh, apparently far down in the polls and, uh, there is that situation. But Rwanda is going to be, as many people are saying, the hill that which is sooner dies on. That's a hill on which he's hanging himself. Would it tell you from day one that that Rwanda thing was not going to work? And we did say that the ancestors would deal with Britain and Kagame in Rwanda and everybody else who was pushing that foolishness. And it looks as if some of the strongest Nyabingi and them, the strongest ancestors from the region, look like them just come out and say, ho, ho, hold up. Mr. Richie Sunak and Miss Suela Braverman and the one before I had the name again, Pretty Patel and them. They dreamt up this scheme to send migrants who were going into England because obviously they, according to them now, there are too many refugees in them country. All it is is that they have taken all the Ukrainians in and so all the others they are shipping off to Rwanda. They have already given some 260 million pounds to Kagame. For what? I don't know. So there is that question that Richie Sunak has to answer. But what did Paul Kagame do with that money day? And why did he get that money? So that's another question. Then there was the M23 rebels those gangsters who are killing women and children and raping women and children in the DRC, in the DR Congo, that every single research and investigation have pointed to Kagame and Rwanda as funding the, DR, the, the, the M23. Of course, Kagame is a good friend of, friend of Jamaica. <laughs> All right, so that's another story. I think I do have my brother in line. Uh, Chief Richard Curry, good morning. How are you doing? Pleasure. Good morning, sister. How are you? Welcome to the space. I'm well if you two are well. I'm doing great, madam. Thank you very much. All right, you get back your light? <laughs> no, it's still out of power. <laughs> but uh, we're, we're managing. You, you don't have a right to electricity on this International Human Rights Day? Well, you know, Kabu, as they say, you have to do for yourself sometimes. And, you know, we nev- we've never taken sight of that. So, you know, we're working on all um, these things to be sure that, you know, we don't over rely. Um, and where possible, we can strike partnerships and agreements. So, you know, we're looking at being, um, you know, self-sustained so, yeah. at some point. And, the, and as long as the sun is shining, there is solar power. So this is where uh, we have to go. We really do have to put and ourselves. The yeah, and the wind. We really do have to put ourselves in charge of ourselves because if we depend on them people here for too long, we know it go. But um, good to have you online. Uh, once again, we're looking um, to January 6th, which is always uh, a, a really big event in 
Akompong and um, we always talk about in this space. What are the what are the plans for this year? Well, yes, thank you. So Maroon Fest 2024, January 6th. You know, every year on this one specific day, we celebrate and highlight the culture and, of course, our chief warrior, Captain Kojo, who fought valiantly um, along with others for, you know, a centuries-long war, um, you know, which culminated in a treaty of peace and friendship. You know, that treaty, which still stands today, symbolizes many things and stands for many things and I think we've allowed a lot of the noise to get in between the relevance and pertinence of this document and I think right now it will become more evident why this is worth looking at and preserving and we want to highlight that um, in January 6th the title return to a compound return to your roots and by returning to your roots we're talking to your essence, nature's man. And there are certain freedoms that are prescribed that we haven't quite comprehended. And we want to use this opportunity to highlight that. But there's also one other major initiative that we want to put to the floor. And that has to do with our traditional medicine, you know, indigenous Caribbean medicine. And what that is, is, and I think, you know, I would want to, to, to really dive into this a little bit with your Kabu. Mm -hmm. um, right, so you before know, you go into the medicine, let's go back to the treaty quickly because um, y you know when the minute you said it, you know that I was going to go back there. Um, and, and I noticed I noticed how you couched it and I, I noticed the words that you used. I've had many discussions with you since we've had um, uh, the last conversation on air and we also asked you this question on air as to whether or not there is a space and there needs to be a, a space created um, for this conversation, this discussion of the treaty signed by Kojo, what it entails, and how to proceed. So it's not, I, I'm not, at, at the time you said yes. No, I'm hearing though yeah. from what you said just now that there might be a change in your stance. Am I right or wrong? Um, in what way? Meaning, in terms of whether or not there needs to be that ongoing, that at least that conversation between whether it's academia, activists, those of us who have questions about the treaty, because obviously oh, we know the treaty included a whole lot of things, including, of course. including that aspect of the treaty that we have challenged in this space from time to time, um, which is a contentious aspect of um, returning. Um, Run away, um, uh, enslaved Africans who would free themselves. So, so there is that. Uh, do you th are you saying that there is no longer this need for a discussion mm -hmm. on the treaty? No, no, no. There's one hundred percent the need um, for dialogue because, as I said, you know there are so many things that get in between the 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 the, the real substance of the document. It 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 causes us to to, you know, from a level of. Um, and pardon the, the use of the word is not being condescending, ignorance of the interpretation of that document and what it meant in that time in the language. Today, when we when we're able to articulate in a space that allows for this transition of the um, narrative, it will clearly transcend to the people. Okay, so this is something we've never really looked at. And that's the point I want to get everyone to. So there's one point that I'll, I'll, I'll just mention because I really want to talk more about Maroon Fest, but I think we do need to have another um, conversation on this uh, topic, Kabo. Mm -hmm. But when you look at um, land rights and what we see happening right now, mm -hmm. the issues that we have accessing beaches, the issues that people have, um, you know, being pushed off land, all these things, mm -hmm. this treaty preserved land rights for persons residing on this island. Mm -hmm. So there's no one right now who should be taken or kicked off any part of land that is described as crown land. Mm -hmm. The most of Jamaica did not know that. So, so that, so that the point, so that the point to be made, and and obviously we're not going to do that do this in this program here. But I know that my listeners are going to be um, up in arms already. 
um, and there are many sides to this. The, the point of contention is that, and, and the point you are making, is that, okay, so there are so many other um, different elements that's included, different uh, um, acts or, or what, what, what you call the, the different points in the treaty, that there are so many clauses. others, clauses, that um, the, 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 the wholesome discussion of this document needs to take place. I am inviting you again, uh, Chief Curry, for us to have that discussion. And it doesn't have to be a public discussion. My, my thing has always been over the years that we have to determine what unity is going to look like. And this, dis- and so this discussion must be had. But I think it is, as I said when I came to Akampong a few years ago, that I'd come there just to ask all the Maroon chiefs if they were willing to have this discussion on the treaty and every single one had said yes at that time and I've asked you since and you've also said yes so the thing is to to let us have this conversation about the treaty um, and especially that clause and then what needs to be done from there because there has to be some action for us to get past this um, uh, 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 arm pass that, that, that we have alright so, so the other let thing that, yes go ahead let me say this before you move on Kabul. Uh, 